Awesome. Yeah, I met a lady that was my Uber driver back from the Hall of Fame that knew more about Massillon and McKinley. Oh, yeah. Rivalry, you, your dad, everything. I learned more on that trip back to the Hotel Hilton yeah. Carolina over there. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah, well, there's a lot of people that we know back there, so it was uh, fun to do that. This guy right here was at the game when you played. You're, you were the quarterback when you played. Oh, wow. So Washington. You play. Okay. Yeah, you play. I sat on top of the press box with Lee Montville. From yeah, <laughs> I remember Lee did that. Lee was with us for a long time that week. That was a heck of a, that was a, heck of a deal. Vinny will always one up me. That. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, getting back to business, though, Josh, uh, it's been a little while since we've seen Darren Waller uh, out mm -hmm. there in the practice room, for one. Um, any update on, on Darren? And then also, uh, Brandon Parker seemed like he got dinged up a little bit in that uh, game on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Any status report on Brandon? Yeah, no, both guys um, working back, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, we have a lot of guys, I would say, are in that boat, you know, right now. I mean, it's... It's our third, third real week of training camp, you know, in terms of practices. I think this is practice 15, if, it, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in that vicinity. So a lot of guys that are, you know, bumps, bruises, um, you know, and they're all just working extremely hard to try to get back as soon as possible. And when they're ready to go, then, you know, we're going to put them out there and, you know, try to continue to build. <clears throat> team has expectations, but there's a lot on this Raiders team. So as a coach, how do you balance the risks of playing guys in a preseason game that doesn't technically matter, but also wanting to get them live reps? Yeah, I think there's, you know, I, I think each situation is different. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely a, com a competition uh, portion of this that's involved uh, in each decision that we're going to have to make. Um, you know, you have so many opportunities to let them compete and earn their role, um, which I think is the right thing to do. And then there's other times, there's other reasons for, uh, you know, you, you do things in a preseason game um, to either evaluate something schematically or there's a communication aspect to it, you know, from the players with the green dot, there's coach to quarterback, um, there's different combinations of people that we'd like to see play together. Um, so... You know, it's not just one thing, one size fits all. So there's a lot of different reasons uh, for doing a lot of things, um, you know, and whether you want to decide to rush punts or not rush punts or cover kickoffs or try to kick touchbacks or, you know, there's a lot of different things that go on. And I would say there's even a lot of things that go on during the course of the game um, that could make us make a decision that we would otherwise not do. So. Um, we try to use each opportunity that we have, whether it's a practice or a game, um, you know, in the month of August to the best of our ability to help us, you know, get to ultimately what we need to get to, which is the, the best evaluation of our team, and then try to make those decisions at the end here when, 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 we're, when we're asked to do so. So that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> Just for clarity, uh, <coughs> some speculation about Waller is an injury-related thing, is what you're saying? He's, yeah, he's working to get back. Josh, we asked, Josh, we asked uh, Derek yesterday about if he doesn't play, being on the sidelines with you, especially even at this point in his career, like how much with the new, with the new offense just watching can he learn? He said he spent a lot of time with you last week. Like what do you want to see out of him yeah. if he doesn't play? Yeah, I mean, all those guys, when they're not in the game, you know, to me it's a great opportunity to, you know, for the quarterbacks, one, listen, you know, because he had the earpiece in. So it was basically like – you know, like he would be out there, and this is the kind of communication, the dialogue um, that would be happening with the quarterback from the from the play caller. Um, I think that's very valuable. And then I think all of our players, just understanding how we approach each situation, um, each coaching staff, um, you know, I'd say addresses or tries to play situations differently uh, in many cases. So, you know, we were backed up last week. We had a two-minute situation come up on defense. You know, there's there's all these different elements to the game that, you know, we just don't have that many opportunities, you know, to go through before, you know, September 11th. So um, everything that they hear on the sideline, every time we have one of those come up in a preseason game, I think it's an opportunity for us to grow and improve. And he handled it perfectly last week, and I would expect the same this week. We talked about the offensive line, not just in a starter sense, but also a group sense. Mm -hmm. And swing tackle becomes a pretty important, you know, part of any team. Where are you at with that uh, in that role, and how big of an opportunity is Sunday for somebody over, especially over on that left side, mm -hmm. kind of equip themselves pretty well? Yeah, I think we're, you know, you'll see a few different people over there. Um, you know, we did that, some of that against Jacksonville. We'll do some more of that against Minnesota. So, 
um, you know, it's an important opportunity. Um, you know, it's kind of like the backup quarterback. Nobody talks about him until he's the most important person in your organization. And so, you know, the, the same thing is true for the left tackle or a guy that would swing on either side. You know, once you have an injury, now all of a sudden that position becomes really important. And it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. And, and so to have the ability to do that, and we flopped some guys during training camp uh, to give them opportunities to work at that. Um, it's something that takes a lot of reps. Uh, it's something that, you know, you're getting calls on the right side that you're not getting on the left side. You know, and so you got to be able to think, you know, very quickly on both sides. Um, so we're going to gain more knowledge on that for sure on Sunday. Specifically for, for Thayer Mumford, he spoke to us yesterday saying in OTAs he kind of had some, some moments where he was kind of questioning things, and it seemed like he's come a long way since then. What have you seen from him kind of developing? This yeah, Thayer's really put his head down and just worked every day. Um, he, he's, he's gained confidence as we've moved along, um, which, is, which is typical for young players if they put in the time and effort. Um, <clears throat> you know, he's, he's played against some good competition. You know, I mean, he, he, he's handled some good edge rushers. He's competed in a really good league. He's played a lot, a lot of good football over his career at Ohio State. And so um, he's learning how to apply what he's done and now what he's learning, you know, at our level, uh, at our league. And, you know, like all rookies, has a long way to go. But really like his approach, uh, works hard each day to try to get better at something. Uh, and he's definitely made progress because of what he's done. Particular, he talked about the adjustment mentally as much as physically and, and kind of talking to a counselor just to kind of get his mind right. How much is that do you leave to the players to kind of figure out and how much you guys speak kind of about mental health and mental adjustment uh, as far as coming to this level? Yeah, we, 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 I mean, we certainly have that in-house every day uh, for them. Gene does a tremendous job of that. Uh, Montel uh, and his crew do the same thing. And, um, you know, it's a very important part of just, you know, our interpersonal interaction with these guys is making sure that, you know, look, there's a lot of things going on in all of our lives outside of what happens inside this building. And so uh, just making sure that guys uh, are equipped with what they need if they need something from us. Uh, and also having an understanding of the fact that, you know, everybody's day to day is not the same. You know, uh, we all deal with different things. We're all different human beings. And um, you know, and, and they do a tremendous job of being available uh, when our players need them or any of our staff for that matter. Um, and we, we, we absolutely push that if that's necessary. If that's something that we feel like could help somebody, then they, they absolutely seek it out and as they should. Uh, and then we get them the, the, the time that they need. <clears throat> Coach, yesterday, Derek Carr said that he believes that your greatest attribute is your attention to detail, how you can know what's going on from the starting quarterback to a backup special teamer. How have you developed that level of attention to detail over time? Who's helped you through that process? Uh, well, I'd say I still have a long way to go in, in regards to, you know, learning about all those different things. I learn things from our coaches every day, for sure. Um, I just think, you know, for every young coach or, or person that comes into any organization, you're around so many really good people that have better experience than you do, you know, in their specific area of expertise. And so, um, you know, just taking the time to really be present in each meeting, whether it's a staff meeting, a squad meeting, um, you know, something on the field. We learn from the players every day. Um, there's things I hear from, you know, Devontae or, or Crosby or Chandler Jones or Colton Miller, or Derek Carr, that, you know, you, you, they have a different perspective than you do. You know, you're not out there. So um, just being willing to, you know, soak it all in and understand that you're never going to know it all, uh, but that you, you know, there's something to be gained each day, each meeting. Uh, and if you approach it that way, I think you're, you know, you're kind of a sponge for information and, you know, hopefully you're you're learning every day and improving as a coach. For, you know, so you can teach it better when it's your time to do it. <clears throat> when you were doing your uh, yesterday, uh, I think it was a two-minute um, segment, but you would call a timeout for players to take a little bit of a break, and then the coaches were kind of coaching themselves. They were gathering defensive coordinator, talking to his assistants. What kind of goes? Uh, what's the thought process behind having those types of periods where it looks like coaches are communicating? Yeah. We tried to do uh, – it wasn't a scrimmage scrimmage, but we tried to try to create as many situations yesterday in practice as we could. Um, you know, there's only so many opportunities to do that. You know, you get some in the preseason game if they come up. Uh, so trying to create those in practice and trying to do it organically, you know, and hopefully it comes up authentically that, you know, you didn't have to make it happen. Um, so there was a few times where we stopped, you know, 
um, gave the, the guys a, a water break or what have you, and then tried to reset the situation. And, and then the coaches did a great job yesterday of really having the players prepared for what was next. You know, we, we weren't in the stadium. We didn't have, we had the one scoreboard. Uh, but we, you know, we moved from first quarter to second quarter pretty quickly. Then all of a sudden we were in the two minute situation. Then we were in the third quarter fast. And then we're at the end of the game. So, you know, we're trying to, you know, get as much experience as we can. And to me, we didn't script any of it yesterday, um, which the coaches really, uh, really liked that opportunity because that's what happens in a real game. You know, it's, it's one thing to sit there and read off of a script in practice and say, all right, this is the next personnel grouping and this is the next play and everybody knows what's going on. But that's not real life. Real life is you really just react to what you see. And so we tried to do that yesterday. I thought we learned a lot about ourselves, uh, learned about some things we need to do better as a staff. Uh, and our team, I thought, you know, really had the right approach to yesterday in terms of what they, what they could learn from it. <clears throat> guy that we know his ability to play, his longevity in the NFL speaks for that. But as a leader, how much of a blessing is it to you implementing a new system to have that guy in your locker room? Yeah, he's he's been a special guy for a while. Uh, when he came in you know, to the league, uh, he was really a mature human being and approached it the right way. He, he, he gravitated right away to the guys that he could learn from. Um, and I think one of the great parts about Duran is – He's very, very willing to share with anybody uh, that he can, and he'll help someone else, um, you know, learn the things that he's already learned. And that's, you know, he adds another level of value to himself, you know, because not only doing the right things, taking care of his body, getting himself mentally and physically ready to go every day, but he's also willing to help the young safeties on our roster, the young corners, anybody on defense. Um, you know, just understand what it is we're trying to do and then also balance the other things that go on, you know, for a professional football player. It's not just all about X's and O's. There's other things too. So uh, great influence on our locker room as a human being. Um, he's just a great person, great leader, uh, selfless, and, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously a good football player. Coach, football is a game as it is mental, as it is physical. Can you talk about the mental reps that some of these younger players are getting? As I watch practice, I notice that they're really fine-tuning and really paying attention to when they're not on the field, especially during individual work. Yep. Can you talk about the importance of that and bringing that here to the Raider way? Yeah. The, you know, each, each rep that's taken on the field, clearly every guy can't be in there for every rep. So um, the best you can do when you're out there is paying attention to what's happening and learning in real time what's going on. And then to come into the film room and, you know, like when the receivers watch all the one-on-ones like we did last night, you know, you're seeing all the one-on-ones from all the guys. You're not just seeing your one-on-ones. So each repetition in practice, whether you were in or not, is an opportunity to learn. And they have to understand, you know, in our league, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we only have 35 to 40 team reps Um, and so not every player is going to be in for all those repetitions. So you may not have repped something during the course of the week, but then Sunday comes and somebody turns an ankle in the first quarter, and now you're doing it in real action, you know, on a Sunday in a real game. And so – and there's no, you know, excuses there. You know, well, I didn't rep it or anything. That happens to every team every week. So um, they're learning how to do it. Um, I think they're doing a really good job of trying to pay attention on the field. I think we have some really good players at each spot that are trying to teach them how to do it even better. Um, you know, just pay attention and try to gain as much as they can at practice. Josh, hate to ask yes or no questions, but uh, we think we'll see Derek Devonte on Sunday. You'll definitely see him at the stadium. <laughs> uh, they'll all be there. They'll all be there. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Thank you.